First of all, Interjects would like to thank Bentley Systems for hosting the uh, Be Inspired Awards. Jerry King, Vice President with Bentley. Darrell Williams, our account representative with Bentley, who's continued to encourage us to apply for this award. And of course, jurors, for your time and consideration of our nomination. The Interjects team would like to share with you our success storyline a little bit about Energex, the business need, our implementation of Bentley Solutions, our results, and like to complete with a question and answer session. With the implementation of Bentley Solutions, Energex reduced design and drafting billable hours required on our gas gathering compressor stations by 85%, while also reducing the request to delivery time of all projects by 25%. Before the implementation, we had a partial 2D and 3D model with limited intelligence. After the implementation, we have a fully intelligent 3D model with reporting capabilities. This slide represents a national view of both gathering and transmission pipelines in the United States. Please make note of the location of Oklahoma. Some consider Oklahoma the heartland of the USA. For you NBA basketball fans, it's also home of the Oklahoma City Thunder. But recognize the density of the pipelines in this area. Oklahoma is the major footprint for Energex. As we expand into the state, look at the different colored pipelines that represents the competitiveness that exists in Oklahoma for Energex. So here's Energex. And who is Energex? Energex is a subsidiary of OG Energy Corp. We're a midstream gas company who's been in the energy business for 50 years with 760 company members. What's a midstream gas company? Remember, exploration and production companies such as Devon, Apache, Chesapeake, they explore and drill for gas. A producing company or a midstream company like Energex gathers and transports that gas. We use 8,200 miles of pipeline that exists today. We measure gas at different points across this system with 5,000 electronic flow computers. Gas is different compositions, so we have nine processing plants to process the gas to make it deliverable to end users and interconnects in various power plants. Of course, in order to move gas, one of the key aspects is compression, which we'll talk in greater detail. As you can see, this competition drives the need for reduced cycle time, which means greater revenue for Energex and our customers. Remember with this competitiveness, it's amazing how many people say we're faster and better than you. Here's a picture of our typical gas gathering compressor station. We build them on about 10 acres of land. They can support up to six compressors and flow up to 36 million cubic feet of gas a day. The average capital project cost for a station like this is approximately $10 million. Today, the Energex system includes 375 compressors throughout the region, 110 compressor stations, and over 660,000 horsepower. So where did Energex start from? Before and prior to the implementation of auto plant project-wise, the Energex design and drafting team averaged 1,400, 1400 billable hours just on the compressor station design package, which included a mere 125 drawings. The team completed 394 project requests with 88% of them being on time, and it took an average of 16 work days to complete. With the competition we saw in the previous slides, Energex definitely knew they had a business need. The Energex business need was to focus on two main goals. We had to reduce cycle time and improve project execution. With these goals, Energex began auto plant and project-wise integration. And to tell you more about that implementation, I'd like to introduce one of our innovative team members, David Stolt.
Thank you, B. Let's go the right direction here. And one more. <clears throat> In order to achieve our goal of reducing the cycle time of our compression stations, we realized we had to do two primary things. First, we had to make the technology work for us, and second, we had to change our way of thinking about our standard compression station design. <clears throat> These two changes happened nearly simultaneously and were to some degree driven by each other. To elaborate a little more on our previous compression station design, they were site-specific designs designed for that one location and it met the flow needs of that one location only. They were not scalable, and we had to change our stations per each time we built a new station. To show you a little bit more about our new compression station design, we've created this video. One of the first things we did is we created some standardized areas within our station. This represents the road area of our station and everything inside this road we have deemed our standard area. The next thing we did is we created a common bench point within our stations. This, station, this bench point changes from location to location but remains constant in reference to all of our equipment placed within the site. The area you'll notice in red here is our variable area of the station. This is the area that is specific per station because we have a lot of different sizes and numbers of pipelines entering and leaving our facilities from many different directions. So we make the changes in this area alone. You'll notice a common header system running the length of our station. This is one of the keys to make the station both flexible for us because it allows us to have various sizes of equipment and locations of the equipment just to be able to plug into this common header. We keep all of our equipment in the same relative location to our bench point per site and are able to scale these site designs from three to six units and back again if necessary. Our vendors have worked with us. We have various, various vendors and sizes of vendors of equipment that we're able to plug into the same design in predetermined tools and assemblies so that we can just plug them into them. The standard bench part allows us to import and export these different modules very, very quickly and be able to assemble a fully intelligent model in, in a very short period of time. So in addition to our station design, the very first thing we had to do was we had to learn the software that we had. We have had AutoPlant for a number of years but weren't using it anywhere close to its potential. So to learn the software, we, t we went through a number of different avenues. We used the included tutorials, which set a good baseline for our information in our software. But then we needed to expand our knowledge, and we turned to the Bentley Institute using online instructor-led classes as well as online tutorials. We became active members in the Bentley Auto Plant Users Group. We also used the BE Communities website. We're active members in their forums, and we read their wikis a lot. And in the rare occasion that we needed technical support, we used, utilized the Bentley Select Services technical support. So once we've learned the software and learned what it could do, we started configuring the software to best meet our business needs. In our, at our company, we use SAP. This is one of the tools our purchasing department uses to purchase all of our, all of our materials for our compression stations and all of the stations across our system. We were able to export the material list from SAP, be able to import it into Excel, and use Excel to compare that to the material catalogs supplied with the Bentley Auto Plant. Using Excel, we made that comparison, and we were able to output it and use Access just as our transfer engine to convert it to a database file, and then finally import it into the Bentley Spec Gen, just a, a included application with the AutoPlant software that allows us to filter and sort these now these material catalogs into a material list that is now matching our engineering standards. So now what we end up having is a material list that includes all of the embedded data that we need from our SAP purchasing system. Once we had these material catalogs or specification files, if you will, <clears throat> we could then create fully intelligent 3D models of our compression stations. Once, that, once we had that, we then started to be able to utilize the power of that model. One way we did that is to, by using Isogen. Isogen is just a reporting tool that's included with the Bentley Auto Plant project that we can take the data from the 3D models and to automatically produce these construction drawings to give to our contracting companies. You may notice that our SAP numbers are also included in this, these piping isometric drawings that we can give to our construction companies. We also created a second Isogen template to be able to produce what we refer to as a weld map. <clears throat> 
or these weld maps are our inspection document for our internal inspectors so that they can be able to record and track critical testing data, welder information, and material information that's critical to us for our internal auditing purposes as well as for our regulatory compliance. Uh, some further reporting tools that we've been able to leverage is just the general reporting engine from the auto plant software and database. Some examples of the reports we, we produce are the bill of materials. We can sort these and use these in various different areas, such as site totals that we can give to our supply chain group to get the materials that we need quickly and accurately and on time. We can also give them, give the construction group the bill of materials divided by out by line numbers. So they can quickly pull material that's needed to produce each line. And we can also do it by construction phase. So if, as we come in and come back into these stations and we maintain or change or upgrade these stations, we can divide these bill materials out by com construction phase, allowing us to have a very flexible station design and to utilize the data as a future use of these stations. We've also created a custom report for us to calculate the inches of weld used to construct that station. This has been a very valuable tool to us because we can give it to our contractors. Our contractors often use this as a bidding measure so they know how much money they're going to, how many weld inches they have to complete to com build the station so we can get more accurate bids and quicker and more consistently. The other side of this is we give these reports to our inspectors and it gives them a measure to be able to track contractor progress. We also produce line lists for our engineering and design team which include our service, size and line number information as well as valve lists which we give to our INE group for them to be able to purchase, order and size all of our valves and control valves. And finally a volume calculation report. And this is another custom report that we wrote which allows us to calculate the internal volume of all the pipes within our given facility. And this has been very critical to us because we can then be able to accurately predict and report any of the gas lost should in the event that we need to blow down or release gas from a station so we can keep our balance sheets accurate as well as for reporting to regulatory agencies if necessary. Finally, we come to project-wise. During the same time frame of we are making all these changes in our compression station design, we also experienced a lot of company growth. In the last five years, Inagex has nearly doubled in size, so it's now 760 members. With this growth, we had a need, we had greater need for document control, and we turned to project-wise for that. At Inagex, we utilize project-wise for our document control or document access and we've utilized a number of tools to allow us to best use that for our business scenario. For example, we use the, the project wise for both file permission, project tracking, and document history. We also use it to be able to get the right documents to the right people at the right stage of the project. <clears throat> we've, we utilize the auto plan integration from project wise to directly interface with our auto plant database, allowing us to be able to search the auto plant data from the project wise environment automatically execute the proper auto plant modules on a per file basis and also, lies, also utilize the project wise security structures within the auto plant applications and then finally to be able to automatically generate, not automatically, but be able to create auto plant projects from the project environment making it much easier to administer these projects. We've also created a custom workflow for Interjex within the project wise environment allowing us to be able to follow the workflow that best works for our business needs. Finally, we've been able to use the title block integration from ProjectWise. This has been a big time saver for us because it allows us to be able to automatically fill out our title blocks for all of our project documents, which prevents both user error and it also speeds up document production because there's not all of that repetitive typing. In the course of converting over to ProjectWise, the NHX team is moving over 144,000 document files into ProjectWise. With that, we get to the good part, our results. I now introduce my boss and drafting supervisor, Kevin Foost. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, thank you. We have now described who Inagex is, what our business environment is like, our challenges and our goals, and David has taken us through some of the efforts involving Bentley Solutions that have helped us accomplish these goals. And I now have the pleasure to talk about the results. I'll begin by talking about two key areas. The reduction, the reduction in billable hours for our compressor station and the reduction in cycle time for all project requests. And first we'll see that with the enhanced utilization of auto plant and implementation of project wise, we began to realize our efforts. 
Here you'll see the reduction in billable hours per compressor station between 2009 and 2010, going from 1,400 hours to 200 hours. This graph depicts the design and drafting billable hours per compressor station over the past four years. Please notice the net effect of NHX's efforts to standardize our compressor stations. This was accomplished with the support and contribution from the entire organization, an outstanding design and drafting team, and top tier software solutions provided by Bentley. If you'll notice back in 2009 and 2010, we completed four compression stations per year. Now in 2011 and 2012, we are, at, we are now at approximately eight per year. There are two anomalies you'll see here in 2011, and those were due to de uh, significant design modifications during that time. The second item I'd like to talk about is the all-encompassing project cycle time. This is between 2010 and 2012. It's another equally amazing statistic reflecting faster turnaround, turnaround time for all project requests from 16 working days to 12 working days. This graph here shows the requester expectations becoming more challenging each year. The column on the right depicts the actual time to complete all project requests on average. These requests include, but are not limited to, design-specific upgrades, expansion projects, and as-built project requests. This five-day improvement in cycle time over 500 projects is a huge has a huge impact on our project execution. Now for a few of the ancillary benefits. Throughout this focused effort to reduce the design and drafting cycle time, Interjects has leveraged Bentley Auto Plant to create a multi-level model structure to allow multiple users access and modifiable rights concurrently. In addition to our reduction in billable hours, the overall compressor station package has become more robust, nearly tripling the amount of construction drawings per facility. Our design and drafting team is made up of 10 members, and we have maintained an average workload of 42 project requests per month since 2010, while also improving on our on-time percentage by 7%. As for quality and value, our typical compressor station now consists of approximately 541 total drawings, including the 350 drawing file construction and maintenance drawings and 181 weld maps used for inspection documentation. Whereas in 2009, our total drawing package totaled 125 drawings. The drawing package then was not nearly as complete or robust as it is today. The additional drawings today provide value by adding more, a more detailed bid package, resulting in a more consistent end product and fewer change orders. For point of reference, this graph depicts the request received by month, though there are a few spikes where workloads remained elevated for an extended period of time, Aver again averaging 42 project requests per month. At our current pace, we expect to reach 500 project requests for 2012. Our, achie our achievements also include project on time expectations. Please notice the on time percentage for 2010 was at 88%. And through the third quarter of 2012, our on time percentage is now at 95%. So in other words, out of the 410 total projects in 2012, We've completed 388 of those project requests on time. Now I'm going to pull all these numbers back together for you. Prior to the implementation of Auto Plant and ProjectWise, our compressor stations averaged 1,400 billable hours to construct and included a mere 125 drawings. Today we average 200 hours to complete, and the drawing package now includes an average of 350 construction and maintenance drawings. In 2010, we completed 394 project requests and an on-time rate of 88%. Today, we've completed 410 project requests at an on-time rate of 95%. And finally, our cycle time. For all project requests, took an average of 16 work days. And today, we're completing all project requests, I'm sorry, all projects from request to delivery in an average of 12 days. These accomplishments are attributed to an outstanding staff, organization, and software solutions provided by Bentley. 
Evolution is part of every concept and design. And through internal knowledge sharing and assistance from Bentley, we have continued to become more efficient while retaining a high level of accuracy and completing our everyday objectives. With the implementation of Bentley solutions, NJX reduced the design and drafting billable hours required on our gas gathering compressor station by 85%, while also reducing the request to delivery time for all project requests by 25%. And with that, I'd like to again say thank you all for attending today. Thank you jurors for your uh, consideration in our nomination. And I would now open the floor to any questions you may have. I'm going to ask for questions from the jurors first, and then once we're done, if there are questions from jurors, we can uh, move on to, to open questions. Well, you guys did an excellent job presenting. You did an excellent job presenting the savings in, in uh, dollars and schedule. That's well done. Very well done. Thank you. Um, what was the who? Who was the visionary? at Enojex that saw this opportunity? Was this senior management or was this within your organization where you got exposed to this technology and then from the bottom up you pushed and said we need to do this and, and so somebody had to make the investment in the technology to allow you and your team to do that. So how did that whole process work? So I understand you asking now, who is the visionary for the implementation? Well, I'm going to call Mr. Shack up here to talk about that from a company perspective because I believe that this was an overall initiative to improve cycle time and increase project execution from a, from a company uh, uh, initiative. We had auto plant at our disposal. We were not nearly using it to its full benefit. Again, we were using it, I think David mentioned, as a parts library more, more than anything else. And really, senior management did, did allow us the opportunity to come in and expose uh, uh, the, the true benefits of auto plan and, and project wise for that matter. Um, would you like to add anything more to that, B? That's a great question. You know, Energex has a lot of departments, and because of the competitiveness, every group had to step up. Uh, I've got this group, technical services group. We do own the products and stuff like that. And to challenge them and say, okay, why can't we do this faster and better? Because if we don't, and they will take the product and, and be transporters or producers. So I challenged them to, to start at certain points and what's it take to get to the next point. But it really took other departments because I can design and draw and improve that time. But if they're not going to build it to what we design and draw there, then we're in trouble. So through them, we started the next group and the next group going to different departments. But the vision, again, was laid out, put it out there. And I've got to tell you, the team we had, if you it, they're just like it was a challenge and you challenge the team what's it take to cut this in half what's it take to cut it in half again and we've got some more plans and it was to get out of their way because they knew ways we could make it better and better so I hope that answers your question uh, thanks for the presentation um, a question on Moving forward with this, you know, in the life cycle, you've now used this for uh, design and bidding construction purposes. Are you going to leverage auto plant for uh, operations and maintenance of these facilities? We, we utilize auto plant today to not only construct and bid out the construction aspects of the project, but, but for the life cycle of the project. We do maintain those facilities via auto plant and project wise for that matter. Yeah, as, as the other juror, I've got a, a question about the impact on the overall business. You've, mm -hmm. you've mentioned that you're in a very competitive environment. Yes. Have you noticed any effect on your success in those competitive situations from this? I appreciate the question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scratch the surface on it, and I'm going to hand this off to Mr. Sheck. But, uh, but I'll draw your attention back to one of the graphs I, I, I showed to you, and that was, that was the billable man hours over the last four years, dating back to 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012. The net effect right there, our increased cycle time and overall project execution from an organizational perspective, we had to step up our game, and you saw the increase in, in those compression stations, again, from four in 2009 and 10 
doubling it in 2011, and it wouldn't surprise me if we doubled it or exceeded it here in 2012 before the year is out. Would you like to add any more to that, Mr. Shedd? It had a real significant impact, and let me describe why. Because of our success to our customers, we were able now to secure dedicated acreage. We have one company that has signed dedicated acreage to us of one million acres in the state of Oklahoma, and we've just signed another agreement with another company for another million acres. What that means is if they're going to do any drilling, we have the first right to all that product now. And why was that? Because, again, we, we're stepping up, meeting their timelines and their demands. We actually try to track how fast we're ahead of them before they finish drilling so they're not waiting on us. That means it's an instantaneous product delivery, which gives great revenue. So we've been able to secure dedicated acres from two uh, large companies recently. Gentlemen, you talked about a fully intelligent model. How is that going to help you in the future with pipeline safety issues? Are you going to be able to go to specific attributes of your compressor station and the pipes that come into it to satisfy uh, state and federal regulators that might want to know 10, 20, 30 years down the road? Mr. Stolt? The question was, is how are we going to use these intelligent models to be able to address regulatory, future potential regulatory quest, uh, questions and challenges? Um, in our models, we have all of our material data and grades, et cetera, all documented, as well as we're getting all of our data, data and as-built back that we then change and correct, if necessary, on the tail end of our projects. Um, all of the, ISM, uh, so the weld maps and inspection documents allow us to be able to, to gather all of the information regarding all of the materials. Um, currently, we're not bringing that material data back into the model itself as far as all of the MTRs and material data, but we are capturing all the data within those weld documents. So that's how we're, we're, we're currently saving it in, it's in a paper form currently, but we are documenting all of that and we're utilizing AutoPlant to produce those reports so that we can gather the information in one common location. In the future, uh, we've talked about with our inspection department of possibly being able to pull that back in, but we haven't to date haven't done that. So the best records we have is all the data that the material, the, the initial material grades and sizes that our models show, and we are verifying that to our as-built process, but we're not tracking all of the material MTRs, et cetera, if you will, to date. Um, in the future, that may be something we look at, but at the moment, we're not tracking material MTRs, but we are tracking all the material grades and verifying that to our station facilities. I'll ask you one more question. I saw in 2009, I saw a very little learning curve. It looked like you had a staff of 10, your workload doubled, so you were able to keep that staff of 10 engaged. Was all, st all 10 of your people fully engaged on this, and it didn't look like there was any jump in man hours as people were attempting to learn this due process? Could you comment on that, please? Inagex has been real successful in leveraging contract personnel. The 10 members I mentioned, we have, we have we have between six and seven direct members and two to four con in-house contractors during this process. Um, as, as workload or projects come in, we've been able to, to manage it uh, via the conferences and the learning utensils that, that are provided by Bentley. We've been able to exploit those quite well uh, with regard to the resources we've had uh, in-house. We've also utilized uh, third-party contracting companies to help assist uh, when workload spikes and peaks um, uh, to help compensate for that difference as well. Can I just ask a question? Do you bring those contractors to work in in-house or are you dealing with um, third-party transactions for data and uh, drawings? Twofold. Twofold. We, uh, we, again, we've maintained uh, uh, in-house contractors, two to four members for the past two to three years, but we've also maintained external third-party contracting companies to come in in which we would exchange data with them. And how did that work through project-wise? Did you have any challenges or did that work just fine? We, we, have, not, managing we have not managed it that way to this point. Okay. Any more juror questions? We have quite a few from jury. Um, I do have one question. I'm not a juror, but I'm moderator of that group. So, <laughs> my, uh, as everyone would say. But what, uh, what, I, what I would like to know, so, it's interesting. So you, there were a number of factors involved in your increased productivity. The, the figures are, you know, clearly phenomenal. Yes. 
So I would like to know, in your estimation, what's the balance between, because I saw earlier on you were modularizing the designs. Now what's the balance between the modu modularization of the designs versus using the software and software and process efficiencies, would you say, in achieving your overall increase in, uh, decrease in man hours, man days? Right. Um, they kind of went twofold. They went hand in hand. Because of the tools that Bentley supplied in the auto plant pa package, we were able to, in, it made us be very easy to modularize the station. We were able to export all our piping data into PXF files or plant exchange files, which allows us to create this repository of piping configurations that we could then import into our necessary projects. We were also able to pre-draw all of our equipment and save them as what the software refers to as a briefcase mode, and again, be able to store those as a repository of the different equipment that we can then import in. So it's the software tools that allowed us to be able to make this modular design that we could very quickly assemble using the pre-designed pieces. So we could pre-draw the pieces, export them out in these modules, if you will, and then import and assemble them back in together. And since we're using a common bench point, we could then reference them all together to the same point, which made us to be able to have this system of, of pieces that we could pre-assemble and, and, and maintain all of that intelligence being imported back into the model when we import them. So it created us a very good tool. So we had the modular design, which was critical from a design point, but the Bentley Auto Plan allowed us the tools to be able to do it from a software side and make them all work together very quickly and easily. Okay, thank you. Right, I think with that we're going to open up for just a few questions from the floor. Um, does anyone have a, a question they would like to ask? Nan. Very impressive uh, presentation and a project, by the way. Um, I understand you implement project-wise along with uh, Auto Plan, and my question is, if you plan to have an outside design contract, how do you plan to manage or transfer documents drawn between your internal um, project-wide server and contractors? I'm currently in the discussion with our information management groups to create a, a web parts portal through SharePoint 2010. Okay. Um, yeah. Anything a yeah. little more specific on that? Um, because I, I think it depends on your IT infrastructures, but um, we, we face a major challenge between uh, open ports and allow contractors to access your um, project-wide database. Um, <clears throat> to date, we haven't utilized project-wise to connect with the outside contracting companies. All of our project-wise use to date has been internal. Currently, when we've had to export projects from a, a or import or export projects from a third-party company, we've utilized it basically just through the auto plant software. We can export packages, uh, package up an entire project, and send it to the contracting company. They utilize it, build the station, et cetera, and then send us back the auto plant package. Um, to date, that hasn't been managed through ProjectWise, primarily because the contractors we work with so far are not ProjectWise users currently. Um, in the future, we look at, we are looking to integrate the, our project-wise environment and hopefully get our contractors to utilize it too. And I know internally we're looking to use the SharePoint as our project-wise access for all of our internal members, and very possibly that be the same access point for our, our contractors. Um, like I said, to date we haven't, and it's been managed through the auto plant packaging tools and just imported into project-wise once we get the finished package back. Um, just, it's been primarily because our contractors currently that we've used so far have not utilized the project-wise environment. Great. Uh, can I have another question, Richard? Of course. Sorry. Um, SAP system that you have uh, that produces the, the um, material or material information to Autoplan, is there a plan to feed back that material generated by Autoplan back to SAP? for procurement or um, you know, <coughs> long-term storage? Yes, we've actually, I didn't illustrate that well, but the, the final bill materials that we produce, uh, the reporting from our models, we, we already have, we made us a specific template that can spit that out in an Excel format, and we've made a transaction within SAP to be able to import that station bill material directly in, into SAP in order to create our purchasing list. So there's not the manual entry for all our material data. We're able to take the, the Excel format out of Auto Plant, 
and import it as a transaction through SAP in order to, or, to automatically populate our purchase orders. Okay, great, thanks. Oh, you're ahead. Hey, one thing I know that uh, this wasn't part of the presentation, but we're not stopping here on the future. We've made a, a, a presentation to the construction and project group. David described the red area out there that's always unknown. With the bill of materials now, we're trying to make a, a, a request to them to add more to it, small pieces of pipe, since I don't have to wait to know where specific equipment's going to go, and I wait and wait and wait. We're not going to do that. We're going to try to go and, and add more materials. It's really small, insignificant cost so that they can put it out there where they need it and have some flexibility so they're not waiting on design and drafting so we can even improve our cycle time even more. So we're, we're making even more improvements and plans to go forward, not just stopping here. So I did want to tell you that we didn't cover our future, but we do have some new things coming. Okay, any more questions from the floor? Okay, well, I'd like to say thank you very much, thank David, you. Kevin, B. <laughs> uh, it's really a very good presentation. Thank you very much indeed.